Hi friends, I wanted to give you some um, information about this week's art lesson. I'm gonna be talking about the art lesson that is for primary grades, that would be kindergarten, first and second. But I had so much fun doing this project that I think a lot of our older students might enjoy it as well. I'm gonna spend a little time talking about the artists that were presented in the lesson, as well as give you step-by-step -step guidance on how I approach the project. I hope they help. I don't know about you, but I tend to see faces everywhere. What do you see when you look at this picture? Do you see fruit? Do you see vegetables? Do you see leaves? Are you able to see a face? The profile or side view of a person's face? Well, that's what this artist, Giuseppe Archimboldo, is famous for. He's an Italian artist from the late 1500s, and he is famous for taking these fruits and vegetables and other random items along those lines and combining them together to make the form of a face. This is a much more recent artist. His name is Hanno Piven. He is from Israel. And he makes really amazing artwork. He caught, says that his art is all about playing. Here is his self-portrait. So he uses lots of random items that he might find in his collection to make his portraits, his faces. So that's kind of where we're going to be going with this assignment. If you watch the video links in the Schoology assignment, you will be able to hear a reading of a book that he wrote called, My Dog is as Smelly as Dirty Socks. And these are a couple of the images that he created for that book. This is his version of the father. So he paints often the background and then he adds these items on for all the facial features. Here's the daughter. Now you might be thinking, well, I don't have paints or I don't have any paper to make the background out of. You can do this very simply with just the items you find around your house and just place them on a background. It could be a white background or maybe even just the table. Something like these. So you can create these spaces in all different ways. I'm gonna take some time to show you how I approach this project. So I went around my house and gathered up some random items. So I didn't really go completely random. I was trying to think of things that would reflect my daughter. I'm gonna make a little face of my daughter. Um, so I was thinking about her hair color and that she likes to play with Legos and Minecraft. So I got these to represent that. She has um, little blue highlights and turquoise highlights. So I got some markers because I think I might be able to use those. Um, some things that might represent her eye color, some things that are her favorite colors, some things that are things she likes to play with or that represent um, some activities she's in, like scouts. So I gathered up my materials and now I have to figure out how I'm gonna put all of this together. I found a white piece of paper. It doesn't have to be a white piece of paper. It could be a piece of fabric or maybe just a table as your background. Um, and I also found a piece of old construction paper and I just cut an oval out of that for a face shape. Now you don't even have to have a face shape. You could just build on a background if you wanted to. So you could create the eyes and the nose and the mouth right on here if you wanted to and make different expressions. Maybe they're angry eyebrows or something like that. So you can play with just setting it up right on the paper if you want. Um, I did cut out a piece for a face shape or maybe you just draw a face shape or um, if you can't find any construction paper I have found that magazine pages have beautiful colors if you wanted to make a base color out of pieces of magazine that would be amazing so I'm going to just start thinking and playing with these supplies 
So I am going to use these Legos. I decided the Legos were going to be for hair. So I'm going to start arranging them. So I have made some hair with some highlights, added some highlights in there. And then I think I'm going to use these marker caps to represent the color on the end of her, the tips of her hair. Now I am not gluing anything down because these are all things that I want to use again. I do not want these markers to dry out. I'm going to put the marker lids back on later. So I am just arranging things and I'm going to take a picture of my finished work. There are a lot of artists like Andy Goldsworthy, who we learned about a few weeks ago, who make their creations and the record, the artwork that they keep is actually the photographs that they take of the finished work. So. My son would be very upset if I glued down all of his Legos. These markers were all dry up. So I'm just going to arrange things and get them the way I want and then take a picture to send to my teacher. Okay, my daughter has hazel eyes. So I'm going to add, I think those are going to be eyes. I was thinking little red pom-poms would be eyes, but that might be a little creepy. I think those are going to be her eyes. I have a few ideas for her nose, like her, um, I think for... For scout troop, yeah, I don't think I like that. Um, maybe the nine and three quarters Harry Potter's pin. That might be good. I think I like this. A little tab from the top of the soda. That's kind of fun. Okay, and hmm, her glasses. She wears glasses. I'm going to use these to represent her glasses. And I found this out in... Um, my husband's toolbox. I'm going to put that in for the little connector between the glasses. Oh, that's kind of cute. And the mouth. What am I going to, I'm going to use these paper clips for a mouth. I have some pink paper clips. Now, does the mouth have to be pink? No, of course not. The mouth could be any color that you want. You can have anything that you want. I'm going to make a little Mouth. Oops, I'm sliding all over the place. A little mouth. Ah. These aren't as easy to use as I thought they were. Okay. Ah, there's a little mouth. Oh, that's super cute. I like it. Oh, oh she needs eyebrows. I don't know. What do you think? Are these eyebrows? Just little eyebrows? I don't want them tilted because I don't want her to look mean. I don't want those to be her eyebrows. Let's get something different in there. I could more, use more of the Legos if I wanted to. But I think that that's great. Now, I could just take a picture of it as is. I could add a little body down here. I could just draw a little body if I wanted to. But I think that is a beautiful little silly face made from found objects. I think I look pretty good. I'm Linda Pop. Welcome to my studio. So, I hear you're going to use found objects to create an artwork. Well, that's exactly what I do. So I thought I would share some of my thinking with you today to maybe help you get started. I usually start off with a title, uh, and sometimes that comes from a song or a book or a poem, something that speaks to me that inspires me to tell some stories. Then, this is my cue of future artworks, I start gathering my objects. I give myself time for this because I want to have a lot of ideas and a lot of objects. It's like brainstorming with stuff. There are no bad ideas at this point. Once I get inspired to get to work, then, I usually start off with some kind of a container to house all my objects. This piece is titled, So Many Dreams I've Yet to Find. So everything I use is about telling that story. 
I like to work in layers. You know about foreground, middle ground, background. So I start with the background. I've covered what used to be the cover with part of a pillowcase, dreams, and a map of a town in Italy, symbolizing my dream for traveling. Someone gave me this little piece of wood, which to me symbolizes dreaming, and it's the exact width of this box. Let me give you a tip before you even start though. Uh, if you do use a box, punch holes in it maybe and get a string or a wire so you can hang it up. You don't want to be pounding on your sculpture once you have all your objects in there. Um, if you're going to make a freestanding sculpture, sometimes I like to add feet. These used to be drawer handles. So it puts it on a pedestal to stand up off the table. Okay, I'm not finished with the background, but once I do finish, then I start playing with my objects. We all want to be loved. It's a dream. Everybody dreams about being loved, finding love, being loved. So here are objects that I've collected that could symbolize love. Which one do I choose? Well, that's the challenge and that's the fun. I have to allow myself time to play with my objects and see how they work together. What are the important parts of the stories that I want to tell? How do they fit with the other objects? It all has to fit together like pieces of a puzzle in order to create a unified composition. So, I just allow myself time to arrange. If you're going to do a freestanding sculpture, this is another in progress piece. Again, remember, you have to look at it from all sides. It has to be an interesting composition from every direction. So, have fun, be creative, don't be afraid to take risks, say something that's meaningful to you. I can't wait to see your work. I'm sure your teachers will post pictures. I'll share pictures of mine when I finish them. We're all found object, assemblage, sculptors together. Stay home, make art. Ciao for now.